Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 14th episode of the Open One podcast. And joining me today is Citizen Sids. Now, this woman or girl, I suppose she's very young, but she's very, very inspirational. I, I would say she, she has probably done more for the greater good of humanity than a lot of people do in their entire lives. And it's really quite inspiring at what someone can do at such a young age. And it's quite a testament to, to how we can all, you know, do our own part here. And it doesn't matter how old you are, where you're at, we can all make a, a big change here. So, Sid, welcome to the show. Hi. So I think we'll just jump straight in. What was it that inspired you to, to become a journalist? Um, so my parents were going to the freedom protests uh, early 2020 against the COVID restrictions. Uh, and I was watching journalists like Resistance GB uh, and things that uh, people are like sort of report on the protests. And I'd I'd see them live streaming. And then later on, I'd see the mainstream report, if any report was even made yeah. um, on those protests and see the contrast in between what it was clearly more than like what the mainstream were reporting. So the mainstream would be reporting like, oh, hundreds of protests when it was like easily a couple tens of thousands of people so mm -hmm. uh at the time i was being bullied for just purely my parents beliefs in school uh and they didn't know anything about the protests in london or the magnitude of them so i wanted to show them what was happening that's awesome and, and what do you mean by your parents beliefs exactly uh so being just anti-covid anti-lockdowns and things like that or pro-freedom um yeah. obviously in school we all had to wear masks we all had to social distance whereas like barely anyone did anyway but um they obviously they 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 decided to stalk my parents or my mum's social media and um found out that they were anti-restrictions and everything like that so uh I got the backlash from that during school uh, and how did they first figure out that you know, maybe your parents were, were against the mainstream narrative. Were, were you not wearing a mask in school? Or were you, were you no, speaking they out? Did, or? They were looking through our, our social medias. But were they, were they, in general, were they just hunting for people? Or they just yeah, happened some, to choose you? Um, some of them were following my mom at the time. And then okay. obviously she started posting about her um, and the protests and things like that. Or um, she would post just anything anti-mask or anything. Mm -hmm. Or just like random memes. Uh, and that's how they discovered that my parents were like that. And so uh, how old were you then? Um, I would have been just turning 15 when the bullying started, but 15 when I started journalism altogether. That's amazing, Sid. Honestly, Thank that you. is absolutely <laughs> incredible, really. I mean, think of I think of what I was doing when I was 15, and it certainly <laughs> yeah. wasn't bad. But yeah. It's really quite incredible. Thank you. Um, and so, so how has it been? You know, I mean, you say... You were getting bullied, um, which is quite a shame, especially for for that reason, you know, because it's it's a very noble thing that your parents were doing, and and to to get bullied for that, that that's that's such a flip of what should really be happening. Yeah. Um, is there anyone else sort of around your age you can relate to? Um, yeah, there are a few people, um, like younger than twenty. I know uh, a fourteen year old who I actively speak to, um, who lives in London. I've got uh, someone who lives uh in Norwich like me or I have a few people in Norwich as well um that I meet up with regularly nice yeah yeah right um and so yeah how's it been like going through that because uh, we've spoken a bit about you know you obviously got taken out of school and ended up getting homeschooled how has that been how's being homeschooling homeschooled it's really good like obviously if I was still in school you know it would be it would be so hard to keep up journalism with um schoolwork but homeschooling is so flexible and everything um and like I can choose my own times of when I want to work um I don't get pressured um I don't have weird teachers <laughs> or anything <laughs> like that yeah I, I can choose who I want to socialize with um I, it's really done me a favor like if I think about how I was just over a year ago and then how I think about now once I've removed myself from like those sort of people I it's really done me a favor well yeah the people around you make a make a huge impact right yeah. and uh I'd say it could be a, a blessing in disguise really because um the mainstream schooling system is little more than a soul-crushing 
Echoes of episode through hell, especially if you if you have a, a spirit within you that you know doesn't like that kind of thing. So, yeah, so I think it could be a could be a good thing for you, you know. Yeah. Um. So, do you think you'll continue to to do your your journalism for how long? Years to come? Is this is this you for life? I mean, it's quite quite a bold thing to to say that. It's such a I'd, I'd hope so. I really would hope really? so. Wow. Even even if it was just like a hobby on the side, I would really like to continue it. Even if it like it turns to photojournalism, it's definitely something I really like. I'd like I I'd really like to write articles for someone soon as well. Um, once I'm less busy. Uh, and maybe once I've done my GCSEs, which I do, which I do next year, May, um, I would really like to get more active into it and everything like that. What would you write articles about? Um, probably because I know a lot about COVID and everything like that. So I'll probably write most about that. But maybe also because I do have people, uh, some of my supporters telling me stories um, or sharing their stories with me about just certain things that are happening. So one of my, well, yeah one of my friends they had their electricity cut off even though they've got like a disabled child um as well uh so that's one story that like if something happened similar in like a year a year or two time then I definitely write an article about that why did they have their electricity cut off um because they returned a electricity meter I think um or they refused to have one fitted so they had their electricity cut off for for how long um, it's been three weeks, I think now. It's still off. It's geez. I, th- I think so. Yeah. What the hell are they doing? <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well. Like, yeah, I don't. I think they're currently going through a process to have it, um, or at least find the ele- um electricity people. Um, but I'm not. I'm not too sure what's going on at the moment. But I still don't think they have electricity at the moment. Yeah, that, that's quite something to do with that. I mean, how do you even like charge your phones and your laptop exactly. or whatever to, to, to be able to communicate with the outside world? Yeah, exactly. I think because they're based in um, like Norfolk, it's quite good. That, like they've got a load of people in Norfolk that like they could stay around or they could charge anything with or anything like that, get fresh food from. Um, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, your food, refrigeration, freezers. Yeah, yeah right. Well, her, um, her, one of her disabled children, they need specific food to be able to live, and that needs um to be in the kept in the fridge. So, yeah, it's sort of a very complicated situation. Yeah, I mean that could end up leading to like I don't know, death, a murder, yeah, yeah <laughs> basically literally. manslaughter, manslaughter. Wow, amazing. So. That's interesting. Just because they returned, uh, I've never heard of that. So, I guess they were trying to fight back against the the energy companies and their insane ripping off of the people. I guess is that what they're um, trying to do? I think I think they were saying about five G. Um, ah, they didn't want to get installed. Okay, so it's related to the smart meters and five G. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, what would be like? some of your highlights having been in this in this field um freedom day for definite was that july 19th 2021 i think that's right something like that it was Um, around that time it was was definitely like middle july um i I always get confused whether it was the 18th or the 19th but that was such a fun day i shouldn't say fun because there was a lot of arrests and it was a bit nerve-wracking but it was really fun um november the 5th was also a really good day of 2021 yeah yeah what what happened um there was also a load of arrests um they <laughs> no, were... that's what's fun about <laughs> they, it yeah <laughs> um they were throwing fireworks at yeah. like the police made a little circle inside of like the protesters and they were fro- the protesters were flowing throwing flares and fireworks into that little circle where the police were which was very dangerous but you know it's always great I know another person as well, when um, the police were nagging them, they um, let off like skunk spray and it cleared the entire area because no one could handle it. Oh, yeah. So the action and all that sort of stuff. That's what I guess it makes good, uh, good things to cover, right? Yeah. But yeah, as well, uh, just getting back onto the, the, the homeschooling, because that might be quite harder in the future should the the government you know be be successful in trying to pass legislation that's going to try and i'm not sure exactly what the 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 intricacies are but i'm generally aware that they want to 
come after homeschooling and um I can't imagine what it would have been like for you you know if you'd have had to stay in that schooling system being um bullied because of your parents beliefs and then also your beliefs so uh, I think you you're a brilliant example for for young people right and what what can be done and how homeschooling is a very very important thing and yeah. people should definitely have the option there if they want to homeschool their children it should be something that is you know if you want to do that and in fact in my personal opinion I think everyone should be homeschooled if we just fuck the the mainstream education definitely like um there's only been a small bit of hassle at the start from like the council but since that like that was only when I started and they were trying to make out that I wasn't doing the work, even though I, I was. And there was evidence of that. Like there were so many emails going back and forth of the assignments that I'd done and like help that I've got from my teachers. Mm-hmm. Um, but my school tried to kick me out, basically. I said I wanted oh, to really? leave and they were only saying, oh, just stay or at least work in a different classroom just because that's what, you know, a good school does they would be like oh please don't leave us but it's actually happened to someone else that left shortly after me um and became homeschooled they were getting bullied by the same by the same people funny enough they actually I think they um they either broke his nose or something similar like that um and uh he got basically also bullied out of the school and the teachers they just they they kick the victim out because it's so much easier than a whole group of students getting kicked out just kick one or two students out um that are causing an issue by being a victim victim blaming basically yeah that's fucked yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, yeah it's uh, happened to a lot of people um yeah. at that school one of the uh one of the teachers um i don't know how true it is so take it with a pinch of salt but apparently um he was just found out that he was um having intercourse with a year nine this is around this is between 30 and 40 year old uh man as well oh wow uh one one of the mental health teachers actually and one of the behavior teams fucking hell man yeah that was disgusting yeah and then in 2015 someone was uh found one of the teachers were found with indecent images of children um school school is this in uh i know the same school yeah 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 (laughs) yeah it's the same school it's just mental i'm glad i got out of that school yeah and uh you you mentioned someone they they also left were they were they getting bullied for the same thing was it related to no they were just a target they were just a boredom sort of bullying sort of thing i think i was too uh because my my generation are sort of like oh i'm bored let's try and make a girl kill themselves sort of thing or make a guy kill themselves just for our entertainment i imagine but well i'd like to think should they actually be successful in such a dark endeavor that they'd, they'd probably regret it um i'd hope so <laughs> yeah that that sounds incredibly sadistic yeah well um <laughs> norwich is a interesting place <laughs> yeah there, but, wow. <laughs> yeah it's that's, weird yeah that's what the schooling system's like and uh yeah man well <laughs> Yeah, maybe it's a good thing you got out of this, Sid. And it's okay. You feel like you're still learning. I mean, to be honest, if I if I look back at school, I mean, I did near to fuck all towards the end. It was just get get enough grades to get to the next stage of education, and then nobody ever asked to see my GCSEs ever again. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure it's that actually necessary. And, yeah, uh, I reckon it would be far better to have a uh, homeschooling community. Yeah, like when I um do my GCSEs, I just want to buy courses and get like levels like that instead of going into a system. I'd rather just buy them online or anything. Ah, I see what you mean. Instead of going into like a college. Yeah. Yeah, that that's probably a far better thing, you know, because yeah. it's yeah, it's not necessary. And when I look back at how I it was like, okay, yeah, I'm just gonna do this this course in mechanical engineering because it's going to get a job it's going to give me a lot of money but it's I have absolutely no passion or care for it at all um funnily enough it was ended up, ended me up into quite a soul-crushing job that I thankfully left so that's I think it's definitely the better way to go for it man yeah definitely yeah have you considered I guess this probably would be your dream job right being a journalist or is there anything else you would like 
I could do this for like the rest of my life. And yeah, ju- love journalist, it. journalist yeah, is definitely people. my dream, a dream job. I think I've yeah. I've done it for a year now, and I found such a passion for it that I don't think I could fully leave it. I think maybe just normal photography on the side because I do a bit of normal photography, um, like mostly like wildlife uh, and nature. So I'd probably do that That's on the nice. side as well and do like yeah. exhibitions. But I'm really hoping I stick with journalism. I reckon if you just just keep doing what you're doing, I mean, you've started so young, man. By the time you're 20, you could be really <laughs> sorted already, you know? You yeah, exactly. You following and, you know, get some sort of a, an income through that. Yeah. Um, then what, what has the, outside of, you know, we're talking about school and, and all of that, what about the greater community, the, the awakened community? How have they been sort of supporting you? Um, so just like... Um, words of wisdom let's call it like just sort of getting me up and like making me go places all of the time um people sometimes donate to me and I've got like uh, I got my microphone from it um from donations I got awesome. my micro or my speakers from it I've got my new camera from it uh, I've got my well all of my equipment actually is uh from donations um but just also like sharing everyone else's stories that I report because some things really need to get out into the public and mm-hmm. like the fact that you're getting like 10 man protest of XR sticking themselves to the road when really interesting and really um, urgent stories need to be out into the public, but they're not like you can't get mainstream to report on them or anything like that. because It doesn't go with their agenda or narrative. Right. Yeah. That's why we exist. Exactly. Yeah. And are there any examples of anything recently you think people should know more about? um well the people having their electricity cut off Mm because i think it's happening more and more i think some people are actually getting threatened with it um at least um the drag queen story hours and the people that aren't okay with it what's that sorry the the what drag queen story hour story hours yeah yeah what's that i mean i obviously know what drag queen is but the story hours that's what's that yeah so when they they'll they're going well some some of them are actually going into schools i believe but they're going into libraries for an hour and reading stories to kids uh i don't know i'm not gonna like say factually what they're reading stories about because some people are saying oh they're just reading like nursery rhymes and some of them are saying they are teaching kids about um sexual orientation gender identity and things like that and these are like um I asked, I saw someone ask the age range of the um, people they aim to read to. And one of them said eight and under. So these are still very much developing children um, going into these libraries. Um, but they, they said it's to teach about equality, which fair enough to be fair, but one, these are children. Like no matter what you're reading, to them about and whether you're teaching about equality it's a child at the end of the day they don't need a drag queen which no. is like you know it's it's quite sexual nature especially like their um acts they are quite sexual in nature they don't need a drag queen reading to them but also <laughs> no, <they fucking> what, <laughs> what about like if you want to teach a kid about equality why don't why not like an actual child why not teach, uh, get a uh, person of colour to read to them or someone with a different accent to them? Because that's something they'd definitely more see. <laughs> well, I'd hope anyway. <laughs> that would make a lot more sense. Yeah. And also, I think if a child is discriminating that young, it's the fault of the parent. The parent needs educating, not the child. Yeah, right. But then you've got uh, people being brainwashed from the media. And can you actually yeah. imagine being 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 a parent and thinking, oh, that's OK. You know, this guy <laughs> who's dressed like a fucking drag queen is reading about this my child. You imagine That's OK. Like... I know there, there was a, a drag queen story hour by someone called Auntie Titania Trust. Her uh, past name is Titty Trash. Titty and, Trash. Um, yeah. Oh, geez. Um, and there was also there was a protest against it, and then there was a counter protest by the Norwich Antifa, which were protesting. Oh, this Norwich Antifa, all right, yeah. Yeah, they were. Oh no, they're actually. Yeah, they're called. They they are fascist in themselves. No matter how much they want to call their Facebook page Norwich anti-fascists, um, 
but they they were protesting against the protesters who were protesting against the drag queen story hour that happening <laughs> in the millennium uh, forum um and oh my god they they kettled about or well, including myself and um another journalist uh there was around well, i don't think there were even 10 of us at that point um the protest was de- a decent size um at the start but it all fizzled out once the story time had finished but um they the uh pride or the um antifa they came back and kettled all of us um that were left and the police had to escort us out um after like two days afterwards or like what they were labeled in the north walsham protest because there was another anti-drag queen story hour protest there the edp which is eastern daily press which is like local to norfolk they had stated that those protesters were a uh, abusive aggressive mob sort of thing but antifa kettling some protesters which didn't do anything really apart from just protest what they thought was wrong hmm. you know it sort of counteracts that surely yeah, have you got any footage of that uh yeah it's on my live stream from it i don't have it uh taken off at the moment from it but i do need to do that actually at some point and where, where can we find your your material um so i am on a lot of social medias basically if you just type in citizen sid then i should mm-hmm. come up basically anywhere uh but off the top of my head rumble odyssey youtube instagram twitter uh facebook but it's probably under sydney jones rather than citizen sid uh getter as well uh-huh Okay, cool. Well, yeah, guys, you should definitely check that out. That sounds quite interesting. And it really does sound like it's all going off in Norwich. It's just, it's, <laughs> I'm just hearing all these different stories. I, I have a totally different image of Norwich already. Like, <laughs> yeah. I've never been there. Never, I've only met a few people from there. And I thought, oh, it sounds like a cool place. But geez, man. Yeah, my uh, my dad actually got punched by one of the uh, Antifa ah. lots. Uh, right yeah. at the start of the protest. Before any, because basically me and another journalist, that's correct, not political. We got there first, basically um and the protesters sort of hung back at the pub because they just they didn't want to go down straight away they wanted to sort of prepare themselves because antifa was waiting for a specific person as well and me actually because i had been targeted uh by norwich anti-fascists a few days prior they were making me out to be some fascist nazi far right nazi (laughs) like labeling me it just because i reported on things like pride uh like um the freedom movement and i went to i went to the pride festival in norwich a couple uh, weeks back um and in, instead of saying oh look she reported on this because the mainstream didn't show the true numbers but she reported on it they went no she really likes uh re- weirdly reporting uh re- weirdly recording people from pride for some reason but it's like, well, I've also reported XR. I've also reported the TUC protest. But you're just going to focus on the things you don't like about me. Um, you know, like, if you're going to label me a far-right fascist Nazi for what I, <laughs> what you don't like that I've reported, then why don't you also um, re- uh, label, me as a, label me as a lefty Marxist? Because I've also recovered XR, TUC, etc. So they're very picky on what they like about everyone. So I was specifically targeted. Same with um, I don't know if you know Chris Mitchell. No. Um, he's uh he's a freedom fighter as well, and he was at the North Walsham protest. Uh, he's quite well known within the press, uh, I think, and in uh within like anti-fascist groups. Mm-hmm. Um, but because we were seen together just at the North Walsham protest, instantly that made him think. Right, she know she's exactly the way of thinking as they are um she she agrees the exact same beliefs etc it's like no none of them asked anyone else's beliefs or anything as well yeah it's like no one none of the nt4 were like what do you think about the oh no one of them was and then a patriarchal alternative turned up so i started recording their banner so she walked past me and so she was like, oh, you are a fascist then. <laughs> How did that change yeah. within two hours? But just yeah. because a different group turned up. Well, you clearly ridiculous. must be making waves, you know, people they're starting to target you, right? Yeah, it was really, it was really funny. I can't talk too much about it because I'm not sure 
if the police are dealing with that at the moment but the person who was quite it is quite well known within the um trans activism and trans right community in Norwich um he basically is openly um an a, a abuser basically how do you mean um, openly like, what do you mean because he's li- he's put it out in a public instagram post and so i've i spoke about it before the police were dealing with it on um students against tyranny but basically uh he watched his ex-partner assault an underage boy and th- this must have been when those two were 20 um mm. and he he openly said it two years ago on his instagram and since i've reported on it uh or i spoke about it on students against tyranny or uh, voice of wales he's made his accounts private so wow. he must have seen it and he must have probably gone through all of his stuff and deleted it he also owned like hentai dolls um which are like anime childlike porn <laughs> okay yeah um he tried to say that one they weren't his and he was selling them, but his Instagram says otherwise because one of them is like, okay, this one is mine and it's literally with a legs akimbo <laughs> um, anime doll. So, yeah, it's not really the type of person you'd want protecting your kids. It's, it's, it's very, it's a weird group. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be visiting Norwich anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not when any like festivals are on. That's all you'll get. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, um, okay, but moving on a little bit. So yeah. can we just talk a moment about the United Free Press? Because what an amazing creation that is. Uh, and big Isn't ups, it just? Uh, big ups Kerry Murray for, for spearheading it all. And so how, how's it been for you for be, being involved with this? Because you're definitely the youngest member. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, it hasn't made too much of a difference to me, just sort of but because we all still do what we do it's just more yeah, of a, right. a a networking and sharing everything about and like uh if you need some help sort of um go here um but i do think it's a really really good idea um it well it is a really good idea we do need more organizations that are alternative media uh especially if it grows as much as it has so far then like it just it spreads the word out of different stories so much more than what you would just alone Exactly. And, and to me, it seems to be another part of the puzzle of creating, I guess, this new world, this, this new society, piece by piece by piece. You've got um, awake alternatives, if you like, popping mm. up. And that is another way, uh, another version of the media that actually is going to be truthful and honest and what everything that the media should be. And yeah. uh, it's quite an honor to be a part of it. Yeah, it definitely is. It's such a, a good network and a good community as well. Absolutely. And 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 it gives me quite a lot of hope and inspiration, really, as well as many other things that I'm seeing play out right now. And having been in this fight, battle, whatever you like, for like 10 years, now what I'm seeing, it really, I mean, some people are going to be shocked when I said this. I remember saying this on a meeting, actually, in the United Free Press quite a while back, and even that shocked some of them. I actually think we might we're winning. I mean, what do, what do you think? Do you think like do you think enough people are waking up? Do you see do you see a bit of a momentum building? I mean, it's calmed down a little bit in the activist scene compared to what it was last year, but we all know why because the COVID regs were very easy to focus on, da da da. But in general, do you think in our lifetimes we could see like wow, we've won, or, or now we're living in a free society? What do you think? I think we'll see something similar. I don't think people are waking up, but I think they're more getting fed up with the system. You know, you could see the outrage in people when they found out about Partygate, for example, when, you know, people were just mm. suffering in silence when they couldn't even go to their relatives' funerals. And there's Boris yeah. Harding. I mean, exactly, in doing way, coke in lines and everything. But, uh... Like, you, there's nothing comparable to that. I think that really made a lot of people get fed up with the system. And if it didn't, then I have no hope for those type of people. Like if you if you can take that sort of disrespect and if you think the government have some authority to do that, it, it it there's something not right for someone like that. I think I think I do lose hope for those sort of people. But I think I think we'll definitely see some sort of uproar in winter because oh, yeah. we won't be able to have any heating, will we? Because of the um, tax inflation on everything. 
um i think some like no one will be able to heat their homes or anything or it's like not many people because it's just too expensive at this point like all of our money is going to ukraine which we have nothing to do with Mm -hmm. you know so people are going to be homeless on the street just because we're helping a war we have no reason to deal with you think that'd be a breaking point for many people yeah i think so yeah yeah right and then it's just uh I think that could do do it for quite a few people too. And if I just look in my reality, I mean, people that don't even know who I am and what I've been up to uh, are coming up to me and like, ah, oh, these bloody, you know, energy things, energy this, we need a revolution. <laughs> like what's yeah. going on here? And I'm like, okay. But it's then, because you've got a point, right? I can see where you're coming from of not everybody's necessarily waking up and thinking and putting the pieces together and this is why this is happening. They're just getting fucking pissed off. They've had enough. Yeah. They've gone through all of this COVID stuff and now this, now it's like uh, the next thing's happening. So, but then it's like, I guess it's how can we like channel that, that energy in a constructive way? How can we like guide it? Because uh, in, in my own opinion and what I've seen from the rest of the world, I do think the activists here had a huge, huge impact in um, the government's legislation on, like, on COVID. And I think definitely if we'd have all just sat down and think, OK, yeah, sure. Do the lockdowns, you know, mask mandates, 17 vaccines. Yeah, sure. No problem. Let's do it all. <laughs> then we'd be in a very, very different situation right now. And, and maybe in the situation similar to Canada, where, you know, people are if they're not vaccinated, many people, you know, there's a lot of things they still can't do. Yeah. So perhaps we could channel the energy of people getting pissed off against the energy prices. Yeah, exactly. But I think the main issue at the moment is that people are focusing too much on what people believe politically on what sort of the political scale you are. Hmm. Um, it's sort of, I think that's in the event of everyone actually getting together and saying to the government, right, we've had enough. You guys are taking the piss now. <laughs> Just sort yourselves out and do what you're supposed to be doing and manage your country properly <laughs> you know you, like you have <laughs> wouldn't that be nice some, i hope i hope it sorts itself out i think we've got to sort it out sis i don't know if it's going to sort itself out i know, to, you know what I mean? <laughs> but like you know you can't have like everyone hating someone else for their just their this one belief that they don't agree with mm. you we, we have to come together and think right we don't agree that um, the government has been doing whatever they want and that yet yeah, governing everyone else and not sticking to their own rules. We don't like how our money is going to a country we don't really care too much about and has nothing to do with us. Uh, we're not happy about the fact that like everything is um, being taxed way more than it used to. Uh, we need to rise together. We need to sort the government out. Or we need we need to overthrow the government or whatever. It's just like I think people need to put their difference of beliefs aside and just yeah, focus yeah, yeah. on what they do agree with. Absolutely, and that was sort of part of the beauty, if you want to call it that. It's a very careful to use that word. That mm-hmm. the COVID lockdowns were so easy because it, it was like okay, this this pisses off enough people and it's really bad. And everyone can see it. We can focus on that. Doesn't matter about anything else. We just want to get out of lockdown, right? Yeah. Uh, and we did. In my, you know, the activists here had a huge part to play of that. But then it's like, so where where do you go from here? Because even from my experience of being tied up in all of that, if we'd have just stormed into Parliament and I don't know, jailed or or killed Boris and friends. We were in no position to lead the country. We could we yeah. we'd just about keep it together amongst ourselves with a lot of drama happening behind the scenes <laughs> that nobody really saw, thankfully. But it was a lot of a lot of work. So I'm looking at it like, OK, we might not be ready just yet to run the country without this current system. But maybe at the moment we could be a pressure group. Right. We have a list of things that we don't like that they're doing. And if we get enough energy and momentum behind it, then we can like, OK, no, sort of pl- force the government to, to backtrack on certain things that that seems a little bit more easier then maybe in the future either completely overthrow the system or piece by piece like with things like united free press and stuff like that building the new system the better system the, the awake system what, what do you think yeah yeah i definitely think that um yeah i have <laughs> i have nothing to add i have no disagreements i definitely agree with that it's amazing to be a part of, to be honest, and it's quite the honour. And um, but also, I'm gonna take gonna go a little bit more into metaphysics right now. And I'm just wondering, what do you think about things like reincarnation? 
Uh, I don't really, I don't have any thoughts on it because, you know, I can't, I can't really prove it. So I'm sort of like, ah, it might, it might not, you know. Because it's interesting, right? I look at, or I think about how um, I've seen many different people, many different ages and how they seem to get things really quickly. And it's like, why do some people seem to wake up way earlier than others why why is that why is it yeah it, could it be to do with the, per, the the soul and and maybe that there are things like older souls here potentially because i'm just looking at my frameworks and i'm like yeah okay so you might be only 16 but there's something to it there's something more here there's there's a reason of why there's a how yeah at this age my my dad says that well uh, a few other people agree as well uh trauma might have something to do with it with uh, being oh, awake. Okay. Yeah. Um, my family have had a lot of uh, trauma, and I know a lot of people in the freedom movement. A lot of people have had some some sort of trauma happen to them, or at least some in their family. So my dad says maybe it's something to do with that, because I know it triggers your brain mm. uh, in certain ways, especially when you're a young age. It really, um, well, you mature a lot faster, and I suppose in a way it would sort of make you automatically you know not trust the system you know and not trust people that you probably should trust well yeah because imagine if everything in life has just been rosy and it's all good why would you question the world around you be like this is yeah, fine exactly. you know you're born into a millionaire family i suppose and everything's <laughs> provided and there's never any struggle at least materialistically um yeah maybe it becomes a little bit harder to actually question what's going on around you and as you said that though as you said trauma might be what wakes people up uh, at younger ages uh, um have you ever seen the film the matrix yeah so there's a scene you've got uh agent smith and he's he's talking he's got morpheus chained up and he's looking out the window or whatever and he's talking about how how humans define their reality by suffering and it's a real sort of dark and twisted sort of uh scene but i'm like ah oh, <laughs> ah Maybe, yeah. maybe trauma's good uh, in one way and how you deal with it. And, and, you yeah, know. I think I think it's probably a really twisted way of thinking. I think trauma <laughs> does. It, I think trauma does mm. do people a favor. It does show that the world. It doesn't give you a false reality. It doesn't. It shows that the world isn't just flowers and rainbows and stuff. Mm -hmm. it, it it does show that things do happen. Um, and also that there's no shame and if something does happen to you because it happens to a lot of people you know yeah then it's just how you deal with the trauma i suppose right and yeah that's the uh, whole um whole other part of that i mean then, then there's also the line of thinking that's just in my mind right now there's like this is getting a little bit metaphysical again but there could be <laughs> like how you could see um certain souls or people could be a threat to to uh the system so they are targeted even more you know they're like okay look yeah. if we don't if we don't smash this person down they're gonna fuck up our entire game plan here so yeah. you know what I mean? maybe maybe that's how or why people in the freedom movement have had a bit of a harder time or um or maybe that's what we signed up for because like this is what we this you know we can handle this this is, and this will wake, wake us up we go through these traumatic experiences we and we come out of it hopefully stronger i mean not everybody right some people yeah fortunately sort of can go the other way and and not make it through but yeah that, that's interesting Sid. i like that actually it's sort Thank of a good, you. <laughs> uh, good picture we're all fucking traumatized and pissed off so that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's so let's get we're gonna have more trauma with being red pilled instead yeah right but yeah then we gotta sort it out yeah i do think we're gonna see some form of a, a good victory i don't know if we're gonna get everybody awake you know i don't think that 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 would quite happen i think we could get a lot more of the population awake but i do think yeah, there are you something... do have to have sort of a balance don't you you do uh, sort of have to yeah. have that balance so then you know your progress as well uh, what do you mean though with the balance so like it, it, you can't you can never like if oh we'd all be robots wouldn't we if we all agreed with the same thing and we all thought the same thing if we all followed the same people it like life would be very boring and like like there wouldn't be anything to celebrate um there wouldn't be anything well the, the government would never win um <laughs> but nor would the people you'd never feel a victory 
Yeah, and we've got. I, I think we could see it. You know, I, I do. I do think there are some people though that perhaps are too far gone, and maybe yeah. a certain percentage. No matter what you do, you never, you're never going to get to them. You know. And, yeah. Uh, interesting moment actually. I was on uh, just just this morning. I was I was taking public transport. I was on a bus, and uh, this is a little bit rude and crass, but I'm gonna. This is what I noticed. That's so, fine. Don't worry. Anyway, <laughs> um, it it was pretty packed, right? And there was almost nobody wearing a mask but the only three people i saw wearing a mask were the really <laughs> fat and overweight people it, it's it, such it was... reverse logic i really protect about my health I, I really care about my health so i'm gonna suffer from heart disease rather than a virus <laughs> it's like, wow. that is nothing <laughs> i'm gonna put that together it's like everyone else who was you know at least not really fucking overweight wasn't wearing a mask and it was just well they all smoke or something yeah right it was incredible so, <laughs> I mean, if you're still at this point wearing a, a damn mask, I don't think mm -hmm. there's much there's much to sort of snap you out of it. Yeah, I think anyone who's wearing a mask anyway, just for the COVID reason, is very much, you know, a bit of a hypocrite because they'll still be taking these medications who ha which have an endless list of side effects. Mm -hmm. They will be overweight or smoking or they won't have a balanced diet or things like that. They are They don't really care about their health. They're, they're caring about mm. their health in terms of what the government say you should do um, and things like that. They don't actually care about their health. They care about being controlled. Yeah, right. Mm. Yeah. And so what do you think about perhaps like alternative healing remedies or alternative um, ways of healing the body, you know, outside of the, you, you mentioned there could be like you know you take this medicine but it's got an endless list of side effects have yeah. you ever delved into any of the alternative healing remedies uh i haven't yet just because you know i'm, I'm too lazy and also i rely on my parents to get everything um but no I, um my mom my mom actually goes on keto diet quite a lot and okay. obviously that is that is already an antitoxin sort of diet mm -hmm. so uh whenever we all go on that we sort of we never get ill or anything like oh, that you go on it too yeah well i'm forced to <laughs> <laughs> yeah right i have no choice in the matter but yeah um whenever we go on that we're probably the healthiest we ever get so interesting uh i know uh my granddad he had um lung cancer and he was only given like a few months to live or whatever but then he started smoking weed and he lived for oh, a couple yeah? more years so nice you know that yeah. obviously helps as well yeah definitely it can do <laughs> right it's depending yeah. on what the ailment is it, you know we yeah. can be a, a healer um but that's interesting about the the keto diet because uh i've just started doing a uh, personal training uh course and i'm learning about nutrition at least what the the, the mainstream i know it's i'm straight it's like oh this is the mainstream thing of nutrition right and it had the plate and you need yeah. this many grains and this much <laughs> vegetables and all of this and fat and protein was like this small little thing um but i almost think a lot of that could be inverse for for a lot of people so it's interesting you mentioned the the keto diet um what do you have for breakfast on keto uh, my mom usually has like an omelette or something. Okay. Or yeah, like a, a a truffle, which is a cheese waffle. It's just made of cheese or mozzarella. Wait, uh, <laughs> say that again. A truffle. 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 How do you spell that? <laughs> uh, I don't actually know, but I think it's C H uh, and then waffle. Truffle. <laughs> truffle. <laughs> okay. It's okay. a lot healthier apparently, but. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> it I tastes mean. Tastes really nice as well. Yeah, I think there's definitely uh, room for for vastly different ways of, of eating that than we're told on the, on the mainstream. And from yeah. my own experience, yeah, the the whole food pyramid does seem a bit backwards. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think as well because everyone's body's built differently, so your body can take certain amounts that maybe another can another body couldn't take. You know, it it sort of you have to sort of find what's better for you rather than just assuming everyone's bodies are the same absolutely right and that is the the huge failings of the allopathic it's just okay this this pill for everyone for everything for this ailment that's it you know it's it's madness yeah. really yeah exactly 
and I did try keto a little bit. It didn't work too well for me. Um, like it was quite good for a bit, but then I don't know, maybe I didn't do it for long enough. And there was a few things I was missing, but actually just as I'm thinking, it's like, cause I remember not uh, quite a while back on this, on this show, I, I had a carnivore on, right? And I don't know if you saw the episode, but this guy had ate nothing but meat for seven years. Oh my gosh. Right, it's incredible. I mean, imagine yeah. you've done it for like six months or something. You know, okay, bro, what if you do it for long? Seven years. And he was like, vegetables are bad. Don't <laughs> eat vegetables. And I'm like, what the fuck? It's like <laughs> complete reversal. So yeah, I yeah, and then I I uh, I found I'm a bit more towards that. Uh, I could definitely never be a vegan. I definitely would. That doesn't yeah, definitely work for not. me. Um, but I've seen I've seen a few examples of that working for people quite well uh but yeah very interesting and as well i think there's there is much to still be discovered in these realms and um i think uh, the western society maybe lost some of its knowledge on the human body that some of the eastern um society have kept like i don't know what your thoughts are on what about acupuncture do you think about that? that acupuncture mm. uh, so you know it's like those needles Oh, what do you mean? Like, um, like, uh, oh, I've forgotten what, what it's called, but um, where if you like, you have a headache or something and you it make yourself bleed. It can be used for that. Like anecdotally, I come across quite a few people, especially when I was traveling uh, specifically. I remember this, this French woman who said she used to have terrible period cramps and it was always every month hell. And she had acupuncture and boom, gone. Just... That's what certain piercings are supposed to help with, actually. Really? Yeah, certain. Uh, so I have a helix piercing, and I believe it helps with migraines. Um, Fascinating. So if you if you get piercings in certain places, it's supposed to help you. See, if that's the case, then what? Do you, how? Why? How could? I don't know. I guess it? like nerve endings or something. I'm not quite sure. See, this don't is it. This science. is where. This is where uh, some parts of Eastern knowledge, I believe, fill in the blanks here. Because they they seem to have these philosophy of you know, of the body that there's also uh, well as your veins and all this so there's like energy pathways throughout the body right and that the supposedly certain points if you put a pin there or a piercing apparently yeah <laughs> it, it maybe it it moves the energy around or or it unblocks something and that yeah can get things moving again and uh, I think it's very very interesting it sort of paints the whole new picture of of the body that we don't i'm doing this course and i'm like i bet they're not going to mention anything like that <laughs> like you know yeah of course not yeah, they'd rather so... you get pilled up instead that does seem to be the way but it's uh may i, I think of that a woman that i mentioned that uh, she has these cramps and she just takes painkillers just to get rid of it for like yeah every for the rest of her life around a month or, or she just get acupuncture and it's gone yeah it's mental yeah man so hopefully, because I think that's um, part of, I mean, when you look at activism and what it's trying to achieve, I think the more healthier people are, the more energized they are, the better they will actually be at being an activist, right? Yeah. Well, what, with activism, it's not just, you know, being a keyboard warrior and uh, <laughs> sharing stuff all of the time. Yeah. You do, if you want to do activism, you do have to get out there. You know, you do need energy for that. It, it can drain you. <laughs> absolutely and can you remember the very thing that sort of woke you up like that moment that you were like aha and you never looked back no because like my dad uh well he started with you know researching flat earth and gravity <laughs> okay yeah he started straight down uh when yeah, i was about right. eight so eight years now um so i Did think he tell I've... you about it yeah i can Oh, for man. eight years it's been endless <laughs> <laughs> i i can't have a normal conversation with my dad <laughs> he's always okay. it like he's very much as well that celebrities are transgenders you know so it's like i i was talking to him about the uh johnny uh johnny depp case uh and amber heard and he was like whenever i said johnny depp he was like oh yeah she's the one from Pirates <laughs> of the Caribbean, isn't she? Uh -huh. so, <laughs> i can't i can never have a normal conversation with my dad but uh, I think it's sort of just, I, I don't think it's sort of something that woke me up specifically. I think it's just having awake parents that um, did it for me more than anything. It's sort of like, oh, yeah, well, 
I've already known this for eight years that the world isn't how it seems. So I, it's not really too much of a surprise. Wow, I can only imagine from such a young <laughs> age to already be yeah. like that. Jeez, man. What I do know. you? Well, okay, I'm just gonna flat. What do you think? Is it is it flat or is it a ball? I have no idea. I no, haven't been no, up. Unfortunately, <laughs> unless unless you've gone to space. Exactly. I mean, there are people that you know. I, I've seen both sides of the argument. People scientifically, you can explain that it's like this. Both, you know, both sides. Yeah. So personally, yeah. I think a ball, but you know, until maybe we go up there and see it, it's like. <laughs> I think both of them are quite plausible, but obviously I haven't seen it, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna speculate because the closest I can get to seeing it is on a plane, and that doesn't really go very high. So, for me, it's like I just look at the stars. I'm like, oh, really? Are they all just there just to trick us that <laughs> some fake reality? It's, it's the, the the wonderment of looking up and thinking, wow, there's a whole like you know cosmos <laughs> out there, and I'm looking at yeah. the, the reflection of stars and planets. Yeah interesting mm-hmm. oh we've gone totally on a curve but i didn't think we'd get no no that's curve. okay don't worry <laughs> <laughs> that's totally brilliant fine. okay cool so is there is there anything else that you'd like to share about your journey or anything in the pipeline that you've got coming up that you'd like to share mm-hmm. with the community well i would have had the 17th <laughs> i'm really gutted about that uh, i was really looking forward to it because uh, on uh, the last one um well yours uh I'd only just started using my new camera as a Mm. instead of my GoPro but I didn't actually realize that I had to connect the microphone that I've got constantly I thought it was just an internal microphone which apparently it has not got so none of my footage has sound (laughs) oh no I know so I was really looking forward to the 17th because then I would probably get some interviews but that's not going to happen I think Why, why is that though I don't know if people would know why that's why you can't go um oh yeah it's because of the stupid train strike still convenient isn't it just Mm -hmm. yeah like they get paid more than a lot of people and most of them are probably middle class but everyone else has to halt their work because they can't get to work because everyone else wants the train strike yeah it's a tough one right i can see you know why people get upset with and how how do we take constructive action and yeah um it just conveniently seems to be on protest days i mean yeah i remember i think it was two the not the last one but the one before we had to postpone it because of train strikes yeah yeah you did right i remember that one as well you had to do yeah. a week after yeah it's was, it was quite frustrating you call this time and effort or something and then they just do a train strike and they're like, oh, <laughs> thanks yeah especially with people like buy the tickets like straight after they figure out when a protest is going to be yeah and then like really early in advance and then yeah. they're just really let down is there really... any any other events you got lined up or is that the only one um there's one i think it's on the 6th of september but i'm not too sure uh, i'm on the facebook page but there's a, a a strike at the school i'm not sure specifically what it is about because um or what school because i haven't looked into it too much but i know it's happening um but XR are going to be there, um, like people that were probably from the TUC protest back in whenever that was. What's was the TUC July? protest? Um, it was basically like, um, oh my God, I can't remember. Um, but it was like people from like teachers, uh, people who work on the rails, um, uh-huh. police officers. They were all just on strike that day for uh, pay, I think, and for race pay, for mm-hmm. uh, gender equality pay. Um sexism misogyny etc okay um so they're all striking at school i'll report on that though i'm sure i'm just gonna you know get hated because you know i'm that anti-fascist uh, i'm that fascist from norwich now so <laughs> <laughs> um, but they probably already know my name i, I don't even want to announce that i'm going but <laughs> i'm gonna have to just so then if other people want to come as well yeah stay strong Sid. you'll be <laughs> yeah and protected no worries but you know there's no such thing as bad publicity you know absolutely maybe if they look through my content it'll wake some of them up who knows you can always hope right yeah exactly or at least give them another way of thinking because you know you, you've got to keep an open mind on something surely yes like if the world's flat or not oh, <laughs> yes. no no, no <laughs> not going back there <laughs> so uh yeah as well i guess i don't know my age range is probably generally a bit older but if there's anyone listening, if there's any, you know, people around your age listening, 
do you have anything to say to them about what you've gone through and how, how you know how it's been for you any words of wisdom this far oh gosh um get homeschooled if you can <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah straight yeah. off the bat yeah. because mainstream schools only show you one sort of narrative uh only rarely will they tell you how it actually like the other viewpoints of things and I know for my school when I was asking too many questions or people ask too many questions you get detention so yeah right you're, you're already taught off the bat don't ask questions you know uh like even with science the thing I found funny about COVID is that you know we've all I was taught since um preschool actually that always question science science can go endless it's like basically infinity so you always have to question science but you question covid <laughs> don't question it like <laughs> do it just throw your whole belief system throw your whole education system out of the window when it comes to vaccines and covid now because you're not going to get an answer um so my first one would be get homeschooled secondly is that every single person has an opinion um so um I don't mean this for everyone, but I mean the ones that can't take other people's opinions. Get a grip, because you have your opinion like everyone else, and that's what makes us human. And if you don't like someone just for their opinion, I think you have a bit of growing up to do, but just leave them alone and just let them do what they want to do because they have that freedom to do it. Well, apart from maybe killing people or committing active crimes. <laughs> yeah. Um was it to the point you're doing harm to another right <laughs> exactly that's, that's yeah. what i always say it's like i don't really care what someone's opinions are as long as they're not killing people or anything like that like you're free to have your opinion like i don't care how extreme extreme because you're allowed it um and pick your friendship circles wisely that's my last one because your friends um have a massive impact of who you become later in life absolutely words of inspiration yes <laughs> well thanks Sid it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on and thank you I'm for sure having me I'll see you on the front lines and the protests not on the on... 17th but hopefully <laughs> at a later date but, yeah <laughs> other days and uh I'll see you on United Free Press yeah an of absolute course. pleasure thank you